Welcome to Two Minutes to Target. I think you know by now that if you shoot, your rifle is going to recoil. And those forces are going to impact your accuracy and your ability to recover and get back on target after the shot. Now there are a lot of people who can tell you better than I what to do with your shoulder, how to line up behind the rifle, load up your bipod. But what we're going to do in this three-part series is look at the science and dynamics of each of those and tell you not just what to do, but why it's important to do it. Because in understanding it, you can become a better shooter. Now we're going to kick this off looking at the prone position. I do want to emphasize, though, that the same fundamentals we'll be talking about for prone are going to apply whether you're shooting from the ground, from the bench, a barricade, the back of your pickup, whatever. Now one of the things people will tell you is to get your legs wide and get your feet flat on the ground. And we'll be talking about why this is important in another episode. Another important thing is to get your shoulder square perpendicular to the line of your rifle. And this is so that the recoil forces that you put into the rifle are going to be going right along its length. Now wait a minute. The recoil forces I put into my rifle? The rifle puts recoil forces into me. I'm not putting recoil forces into the rifle. Well, here comes science lesson number one. There's this guy by the name of Isaac Newton, and he had this theory that said, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And if your rifle is putting forces into you, you bet your ass you're putting forces back into the rifle. And while you can't control what the rifle's doing to you, you sure as heck can control the forces that you put back into it. And that's what we're going to be showing you in this video. Now to get into the engineering of this, we're going to start by looking at a fictional 2x4 sitting on a floor. And we're doing this because it's symmetric and its center of gravity is right in the middle and this will help us explain things. And if you kick this 2x4, it's going to slide along the floor and then eventually come to a stop. Now that kick is a big force for a small amount of time. And it stops because you have friction, a small force, acting for a longer amount of time. And this is one of the key concepts, and that's momentum. And the laws of momentum say that a big force acting for a small amount of time can be counteracted by a small force acting for a large amount of time. And this is the critical concept about this video that you need to understand. Now let's say we move where we kick it up to the corner. Well, it's going to do something like this, right? And that's because the board, in addition to having a center of gravity, also has a center of rotation, which right now happens to match up. And when you apply a force away from that center of rotation, you get that spin. And the further away you apply it, the bigger the spin is. And if you're interested, this is called angular momentum, which is a force applied for a time at a distance away from the center of rotation. Now one more example, if you kick at the same time on opposite corners, you get something like this. You have two big forces acting for a short amount of time, opposite directions, they cancel out the side to side, but boy, they're adding to each other for this angular momentum for the spin, so you get a ton of rotation out of this. Okay, should we look at a rifle now? Just like that board, the rifle has a center of gravity and a center of rotation. And when you shoot that rifle, you have a short, quick-acting force that's in response to the bullet moving down the barrel, and that acts right down the length of the barrel. Isn't that sort of like the kick on the board? Now, in response to that kick, you're putting force back into the rifle. Remember, we talked about this at the beginning. And let's pretend that you're this guy, and you're bound and determined to be a brick wall behind that rifle and not let it move. And what's going to happen is, for exactly the amount of time that that kick is acting against you, you will be acting back against it. And since the time is the same, that means, remember it's force times time, that the force has to be the same. So if you're a brick wall, it's the same as if you're shooting right back at the rifle. You're doubling up those short, hard forces and just really beating the crap out of the rifle. Now does this look familiar? This is sort of like that last board example we gave. But of course it's not going to spin like that because you've probably got a rear back at the back. Remember you're a brick wall. So essentially what's happened is you've locked in the butt of the rifle. And that means that the center of rotation, since everything else can move, is going to move to the one place that can't. And when you have those two big forces acting, you're going to get a recoil that's something like this. That's a lot of angular momentum, which is a lot of rotation. This is why people will tell you not to be that brick wall. They'll tell you to be more like a spring and absorb that recoil force. You can see examples of this in tanks and in artillery. It's the same basic concept. So when you're a spring, you're now acting for a much longer amount of time, which means the force that you're putting in is lower. And the other thing that happens when you're acting like a spring is you're no longer locking in the back end of that rifle. It's going to be moving. 
And the impact of that is that that center of rotation now moves back towards its original. It's going to move up and forward. And now look at how far off of that the recoil force from the rifle is. That big hard recoil force is a lot less. And now the distance is taken up by the shorter, softer force from your shoulder. That's going to result in less angular momentum, less rotation of the rifle. Now if we were in space, that softer force versus harder force wouldn't matter as it relates to the rotation because it's force times time, right? Well, we're not. We're on the ground and we have this thing called gravity. And it pulls down right there where the old center of gravity on the rifle was. Now let's put those other forces in the back, on the front, the rotation. And look at that gravity force. It's separated from the center of rotation. It's pulling down so it's going to counteract the rotation that those other forces are putting on it. Now it could only counteract those forces for as long as they act. And this is another reason why the longer acting smaller force is better because it gives gravity more time to act against it. And now we're going to go out to the range, and this first shot is with me on my 300 PRC with as much of a soft shoulder as I can muster. And you can see there's a little bit of a bounce, but it just slides back and then forward again. And in the second shot, I'm trying to simulate that brick wall with a lead sled and a bunch of weight. And look at how much that rifle is bouncing off the table. And let's take a close look at this. You can see that that one with the sled is coming easily a quarter to three-eighths of an inch off the table. And let's go back and forth. You can see how much the one with the sled has moved pre and post shot. All right, so we are way over time, but I hope this video has shown you the underlying dynamics of recoil in a shot and why doing things like the experts tell you, like shooting with a soft shoulder, are important. And hopefully we'll see you next time on part two when we get into positioning and the impacts it has on recoil.